Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. You know, a few days ago I built my own Thunderbolt 3 SSD. It's got a pretty fast uh, NVMe uh, chipset in it. A uh, pretty cool little case. We'll talk about that in a second. And, you know, this is one I bought from Otherworld Computing. I'm a pretty big fan of theirs. One thing I don't like is they say it's an integrated cable, and I actually don't like that because if you screw the cable up, then I don't know what you do. Um, as you can see, size-wise, they're considerably different. And the uh, difference in cost, I think this one ended up costing me about $100 more. Now, this is really well built. It's got this rubberized case, which I guess if you drop it, um, might, might help, but it's also pretty heavy. It's probably twice as heavy as this one. So I thought I'd build me a new, another one of these, and the reason I decided to do it was I decided to put even a better SSD in it. So the company I buy, the buy these from is, uh, I guess it's called Sabrent. I just got this today. This is a Rocket NVMe 4.0, which is kind of a new standard, and uh, it's supposed to be higher performance than the one, the other ones. And I think they're gonna be able to take these to four terabytes uh, fairly soon. So I bought me another little case, uh, and I thought I'd build another one. I, I don't mind the little Thunderbolt 3 drives. They're two terabyte, they're inexpensive. I did a review on them. Well, the only problem is, is that they're slow, and when you start doing video, that actually starts to get pretty important. And the other, my goal is to end up with a four terabyte one of these that's an exact clone of my full four terabyte MacBook Pro. So if something happens to that while I'm traveling, I can plug this in and boot up from it. So this is called a fledgling Shell Thunder. I think it's about $120, $130. I'll put the links in the description below. And it supports uh, great speeds. I don't know if it'll be quite as fast as this one, but this one won't sustain 2,500 megabytes a second. And if I run it through black magic, and we'll do that when we're done, it'll speed up and slow down, speed up and slow down. So let's open this baby up and see if we can put it together. You know, a lot of people are sort of afraid of doing this. I've been building my own hard drive since 1982, or assembling them. You really don't build that kind of stuff. And so I, you know, and this is actually pretty easy. You don't have to be too mechanically inclined. So you get the enclosure, and if we open it up, they give you a little tool to do it with, which is kind of nice. And they give you a Thunderbolt cable, Thunderbolt 3 cable. And this is a little uh, thermal tape. And what they do is, when you'll see, we'll tape the SSD will be taped both sides to this. And so the shell acts as though it's a heat sink, but it's also active cooling. There's a little fan in here. If you keep them cool, they'll run a little better. So pretty simple to install. We're just gonna take the four screws out. Okay. There we go. And as you can see, uh, it's pretty simple. There you can see the little fan. So we're gonna take our Sabrent Rocket 4. The other one I put, uh, this one has the same uh, Sabrent chip. It's, it's the model uh, less expensive than this. And I'll put links below. So that's our little chip. We'll pull it out. Pretty cool looking. They give you these nice little cases. I'm trying to figure out what I can do with these cases because they're you know, I guess the only problem is that's a paper hinge, but, uh, you know, I think I could keep SD cards in, in there or something like that. So there's a little screw here, and we need to take it out. Okay. Obviously, you want to be careful because the screws are pretty little. I'm going to turn this around. goes in on a little bit of an angle like this. And once you seat it, then you're going to push it down. And I found that it's easier to put the screw on this, push it down and kind of hold it up like this to screw that in. So we're mounted up. We need to open up our little thermal tape here. Well, usually I can tear those bags. We can do it the hard way, okay. And this has a sticky on both sides. You have to peel both sides. So obviously if you're in an environment that has a lot of static electricity, you want to be careful. 
electronics aren't as sensitive as they used to be, but I still think you want to kind of watch out. I, I don't, my carpet doesn't really generate static electricity, so. And there's the other piece. Now, they give you instructions on this. There's a, one of the chips right here is uh, where most of the heat occurs. So you want to make sure that's covered. Most of these seem to have this kind of label thing over the top. I'm not sure what this is, uh, but I assume it transfers heat as well. Quick interruption. I thought I would throw in a comment because we're talking about this tape real quick. I'm in my St. George house on my way to WPPI for a quick stop over at the trade show. Going to head over to Death Valley and chase that shot. I've been trying to get a bad water for over 10 years now. Maybe shoot a little video, do a little guide on where to shoot and when to shoot in Death Valley. Something fun to do anyway. On that label, on uh, the Sabrent and most of the Samsungs, that's actually a copper strip. Conducts heat really well. You don't want to peel it off. You want to stick that tape right to it. Some of them have a paper label. And first of all, I'm not sure why something that gets as hot. I mean, it gets, it gets really hot. Uh, why you put paper in, in, on that anyway. Uh, and even, you know, if it's, it looks like it's just a label you print off in a printer. So on those, uh, I would probably peel it off and clean it with some alcohol to make sure that none of the adhesive is left over. Although these things are designed to run hot, so I'm not sure that it's a real problem. And it could be that it'll transfer the heat out just fine anyway. But uh, I think as far as the Sabrent ones, I think you're safe with just to, obviously don't peel that copper label off. You want to put this strip right on it. Wanted to throw that in real quick. So let's get back to how to fin uh, finish putting this thing together. So basically we're just going to lay this on the top here, push it down a little bit. We're going to put our top back on. And what I did is I pushed it down pretty firmly to make sure that that's stuck on this side. They do make a couple of chips that are different thicknesses and some of the cases won't handle those. I actually tried one and it wouldn't handle the, I've got some from other world computing that are double sided. I think this one will handle those as well though. And we throw our four screws back in there. So easy to build one of these. Like I said, I think it saved me about a hundred dollars and I actually like the little case. Should probably put my glasses on. All right, there we go. I snug these up pretty tight to make sure that pulls up tight to that heat sink. All right, we've about got this done. So what I'm gonna do is plug it in and let's run over and run some black magic speed tests. We're gonna see how fast this one is. Um, I need to make sure I know which one's which. We'll see how fast the other one I built is compared to this one, see if it's any faster. And we'll also compare it to the really right stuff one. So let's jump over to do the computer and see how it goes. Okay, so I've got black magic loaded up. First, let's just see what my internal four terabyte SSD does with uh, black magic. It gives us kind of reference. This of course, I think is the, the goal we're after. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty fast. I've never found an external SSD that can run this fast. I don't know if it's because of the bus or just because of the way that they're built and maybe Thunderbolt 3 just can't handle these speeds, but this is pretty consistent. And the other thing about this is I can run this test for 10 minutes. What this test is doing is it's writing a five gigabyte file, then it's reading a five gigabyte file constantly. And you see it's not slowing down at all. So now that we know what we're kind of shoot for, let's go ahead and load up one of the drives. Let's just uh, test the OWC one first. One thing I've noticed is as you use these SSDs and they start getting data on them, all of the external ones seem to slow down. And originally this SSD was over 2000 megabytes a second write speed. And it was over 2000 or close to 2000 me megabytes a second read speed. So it's sort of disappointing that now that it's got several terabytes of information on it, uh, I'm getting these results. I mean, it's still pretty fast. Uh, to give you an idea, the USB-C hard drives or SSDs, those are about 5 to 550. Uh, that's about the best they can do. And, you know, this is better, uh, especially the read, I mean the write. I, I'm, I don't understand why the write speed is so much faster than the read speed. So now I've got some homework to do. I've got to learn more about the technology and what might be causing this. I'll probably give other world of computing a call and see if they can at least help me a little bit. And I'm not sure why it's varying so much. So anyway, that gives us an idea of what the other world computing does. And then this one's about 10 months old. It's been used quite a bit. 
There's probably one and a half terabytes of data on it right now. So let's try one of the other ones. One thing I have noticed is the little fan in this is, a, is not super quiet. It's a little louder than my MacBook Pro is when the fans are kind of at the lowest speed. I can definitely hear it sitting over here. So I've got both of the little Sabrent or the little uh, Shell Thunder. Okay, there we go. Both of them are mounted up. And uh, with both of them mounted, the fan noise is definitely noticeable. Much louder or louder than my MacBook Pro. Probably not quite as loud as the MacBook Pro when it's on full, uh, you know, it's full cranking at full and the fans are going at full speed. You know, they do make these without a fan and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try a few other enclosures and see if there's any that are efficient enough that you really don't need the fan. There are actually several that are quite a bit cheaper and I found some that are not, they're not even available on Amazon that might even be better than the ones on Amazon. Anyway, let's take a look at the speed on these. Let's try the cheaper model first. And here we go. So it's actually performing quite well out the gate. Uh, far better than the one that I bought from OWC. Uh, that's actually pretty encouraging. And this is what I would hope. I would hope that the read speed should be faster than the write speed. That makes me worried that the uh, OWC one's got a problem. Now, as it warms up, it uh, usually hits a snag. And this is supposedly the difference between the this one and the new one I bought, is that it won't hit this little snag when it gets kind of warm and full. Okay, interesting. Let's let it run a second longer. Yeah, so it seems like it'll slow down for one cycle and then it'll pick back up. Although the right speeds aren't. And we'll give it one more cycle just to see what it does. So it's uh, slowed down now. We've written 30 or 40 gigabytes of data at this point. And I don't know, uh, let's go ahead and stop the test. Let's try the other one. I might let this one cool off and come back and just see what it does. Okay, let's open that. So this is the new one. And like the other one, it's read speeds are pretty good. It's write speeds are pretty good. I don't know what makes it vary so much. That's puzzling to me. Like I said, I think I have some homework to do now to try to learn more about this. This is the new 4.0 one that costs a little more money. And from what I understand, it's supposed to sustain its speeds better than the older generation. So this one seems to be sustaining its speeds pretty good. Out of the three, this one is definitely performing the best. So that's encouraging. Okay, well that kind of does it. It's actually pretty amazing that I've got uh, um, 10 terabytes of data right here in front of me. Uh, kind of blows me away. From what I can tell, I ran a, a quite a few more tests just to give you an idea. So the Rocket 4.0 Sabrent chip was able to transfer a 95 gigabyte folder in about 37 seconds which calculates out to be about 90 or 2,560 megabytes a second. Pretty impressive. That's a fairly big transfer. And when it was done, the read-write speeds were pretty much the same. The Rocket Q to transfer the 95 megabyte or gigabytes of data, that took 44 seconds, which still calculates out to about 2,100 megabytes a second. When that was done, I still saw the problem with the read-write speeds and the uh, black magic. So it kind of doesn't make sense a little bit because it's actually writing faster than black magic tests. So it must be able to do sustained writes better than it can short bursts of five. Still really good performance. The OWC one, uh, disappointing because it's supposed to be giving me 2,500 megabytes a second. I don't know if my device has a problem. I'm going to kind of contact him. It took a minute and 35, which means it was only being able to write about 1,000 megabytes a second. Um, still really fast. I mean, that's not, I mean, a hard drive is 100. But considering it's supposed to give me 2,500 according to their rating, 
And when I was done, it surprisingly, when I was done, it, the Black Magic tested out at much better speeds. Uh, I mean, it was giving me 1,500 or 1,700 megabytes a second, and yet a sustained transfer of 95 gigabytes uh, was only giving me 1,000 megabytes a second. And just for fun, I threw my little SanDisk uh, two terabyte USB-C drives on there. Uh, they give me about 470 megabytes a second write speed when I test and about 530 megabytes a second write speed or read speed. And this one took three minutes and 17 seconds, which interestingly enough calculates out to be 480 megabytes a second. So pretty much identical to the black magic speed. And when it was done, it gave me the exact same speeds in black magic as before. Now, I don't know what uh, type of SSD is in these. Um, I guess one of these would fit, but I'm, but I'm wondering if they're using a different type and because they don't need the speed of these because they're limited by USB-C. Now, they have a new one of these coming out, which is supposed to give me uh, a, a Gen 2 USB, which is supposed to do close to 1,000 megabytes a second. And I think it's in a real similar package size. And that's that's actually pretty impressive. Now, it's going to be quite a bit more expensive. This one at 2 terabytes is around $300, and that's actually a pretty good deal. If you're doing video, it's probably not going to cut it, especially if you're doing 4K video. But if you're doing other stuff, this is really fast considering its size. Uh, great, I still recommend these, highly recommend these great little device. Uh, I think it weighs like 2.7 ounces. If you need more speed, um, at this point, this looks like a pretty good option with the Rocket 4.0 chip. It's not as not as good with this one, but it's still quite a bit better than these. And at this point, I am unfortunately I recommended these uh, in an earlier video I did, and I might go back and uh, make a you know I'm I'm kind of. I'm gonna call them and if they can't explain what's wrong with this one, it's got a one and a half terabytes of data on it. And if it slows down that bad with that much data, uh, you know, and when I get these full of data, I'll also see it. I kind of want to know how bad do they slow down as they fill up. According to the couple of places I researched, the new 4.0 SSD is not supposed to uh, show that problem. So it'll be interesting to see. Now this. This SSD actually did have a lot of data on it. You notice I got a label on it so I can keep them straight. And I've got about, um, I, I've got about six, eight hundred gigabytes of data. I, I backed up my boot partition off of my MacBook Pro, but it wasn't anywhere. This one's three quarters full. So when I get these three quarters full, I'll give it a test. Uh, this, the one I tested is uh, fuller than that. It has about a terabyte in the two terabytes. These don't seem to be affected like the USB or the Thunderbolt 3 ones. Well, that's a wrap for this video as I get more information and I'll keep testing these kind of things. This kind of stuff is kind of fun to me. Uh, hopefully I can find a market to sell some of this stuff afterwards. Uh, I shouldn't be addicted to this computer stuff, but you know, it's in my blood. I've been doing it for so long. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching the video and until next time, see ya.